Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 31st and right now we are looking at the Gulf of Alaska Vortex. Our old familiar friend is still spinning out there. You can see our mid-level moisture coming up across the Pacific Northwest. Been kicking off thunderstorms the last few days. It's going to continue to do so. We'll take a look at that and we'll take a look at some changes of foot as we go on in through uh, the end of next week. You're going to want to stay tuned for that as we go through the video here this morning. Crescent City, California, yesterday morning. Take a look at that. The tsunami waves as they came in have been calming down over the last day or two. We can kind of still see that wave action like somebody dropped a huge rock in a pond. That is the Pacific Ocean. It kind of sloshes around and sends these ripples out there towards the coastlines. So, yeah, interesting times there. And it's just a good, good reminder there of what we can get here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, we are up over 100,000 subscribers. YouTube sent me an email yesterday. I am looking forward to what is coming next, but this is your guys' accomplishment. I'm glad you guys like the channel. Hopefully, this channel continues to grow. It's very fun to do so. And I'm glad, you know, I, I like to think we got a good community here across the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah, glad to see that milestone reached. Now, taking a look here, uh, you can see we have some marine layer up against the coastal areas. We have the Bear Gulch fire producing a lot of smoke there as well. And I've heard some nasty rumors that this fire may be ongoing until we get to the fall and the winter months before the rains and the snows can finally extinguish that fire. It's in a very difficult place to fight. And we've got some interesting fire behavior associated with that as well. But also we have this mid-level moisture kicking off these thunderstorms that could be producing uh, additional fires. And I know some smaller fires have started. Hopefully those do not become bigger fires. I know there's a larger fire going off across British Columbia right now as well. Now, taking a look at the last 24 hours, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, every single you know, province or state and got that lightning activity yesterday and that's going to be a reoccurring theme here yet again today more on that here in a moment isolated dry thunderstorms like the last few days we still have that potential ongoing we reduce some of the air for portions of washington idaho maybe southern oregon idaho under the gun again tomorrow now the bear gulch fire i just talked about that a little bit here 2,000 acres only three percent contained it was human caused way back on july 6th and it's flared up quite dramatically here over the last couple of days and they talked about long range spotting basically fire behavior unstable conditions those embers get lifted up into the atmosphere and the winds blow those embers downstream so that's why the fire can easily cross roads and it can jump ridge tops and things like that long range spotting look that up and google it if you want a fun read on that stuff crazy fire behavior so now looking at the vertically integrated smoke again uh, this is going to be flaring up and producing smoke for the foreseeable future i've been smelling it a little bit here on my house that is near SeaTac, washington so yeah we got that to look forward to here across western washington over the next month or so probably at least um, things can be much worse across the area and let's hope this lightning that we've been getting here isn't kicking off other fires that will be growing rapidly here as well now wider view of things here 500 millibars 18,000 feet general ridge and trough position this is the ridge that's been across some of western Canada it's allowed us to warm up but we've got that vortex here across the Gulf of Alaska it's allowed some of that mid-level instability to really be prevalent here across the region over the last few days so where do we go now while well, the vortex continues to spin it does weaken some but we keep the troughing around as we go through the early portion, mid portion of next week here across the Pacific Northwest. And then as we go towards the end of the run, notice the ridge start to build out here. Keep that in the back of your mind. We'll explore that more here in a moment. But first, Thursday, Friday, thunderstorms. Again, Southern Oregon, Crater Lake, Fort Rock, Paisley, Lakeview, under the gun. Even Roseburg, Medford can't roll out a thunderstorm today on the I-5 corridor. And this is for Friday, pushing off to the east a little bit. Boise, Idaho, we got red flag warnings all over the place. There's Boise and Baker City, for example, and of course some gusty outflow winds with this thunderstorm activity up to 50 miles per hour and some dangerous lightning possible. Spokane, something similar, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m., 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow, Friday, potential hazard, gusty outflow winds, uh, maybe some isolated hail, lightning fire starts, and some downpours as well. Now, if we take a look at what is forecast for today, so this is what the HER is showing as far as thunderstorm potential. And it's been, you know, honestly, it's been not very good here over the last couple of days. It really missed the thunderstorm activity the last two days over the Cascades of Washington. So it does show it today. And some of that trying to drift out towards the lower terrain here, maybe over some of the foothills west of the mountain crest or the Cascade crest. So we'll be, we'll be watching that. You see a little bit of that blurb of activity try to move towards Tacoma and Seattle a very low chance there but can't completely rule it out I, I more worry about some of the foothill areas 
maybe some fire starts there across places again just west of the cascade crest but you can also see if i toggle back and forth eastern washington again more lightning potential today like chelan especially northeast washington eastern oregon cascades of oregon idaho panhandle yeah you guessed it we got thunderstorms over the next couple days as well and again another lightning show for portions of chelan as we go through tomorrow and then as we start to move towards a weekend we start to kick that threat and it will stay mainly east of the cascades which has been the case so far anyway now, if we look at the composite reflectivity, what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 48 hours, you see some of these showers try to move off, push towards some of the Puget Sound lowlands, not making it too far, but the better chance is definitely across some of the higher terrain as we go through the day today. Now, if we look at the European, I'm going to scroll through the six-day period here because it's showing some precipitation mainly across the higher terrain. It doesn't show much for Seattle or Portland over the next six days. Now, I want to look at the extended forecast a little bit here because we start to get uh, some interesting looks into our extended forecast here we might start to warm things up as we move through the first half of august european artificial intelligence on the left versus the good old gfs the global forecast system on the right we put this into motion again the trough will be with us through this weekend into early next week but you see what's going on out here the ridge starts to build across the pacific ocean one more week trough swings through the gfs and artificial intelligence disagree on just where that trough axis that short wave is going to come across but then you you can see in the wake of that trough moving through this is about august 7th and 8th we'd be looking at this strong ridge developing off our coastline there and that would really start to ramp up some of the temperatures artificial intelligence initially shows that ridge a bit quicker but the gfs really builds us in with a vengeance that is a very strong ridge right off our doorstep there and both models kind of have that heat going all the way through the extended forecast as you can see with you know kind of throwing in there at times maybe a trough moving across northern portions of you know or western canada here trying to flatten out that ridge a little bit here but not getting much headway on some of these extended runs so <clears throat> yeah we could be getting our heat wave here at some point during the first half of august and if we take a look at the national blend of models seattle again a pretty warm day out there 84 again depending on cloud cover and how that evolves as we go through the day today some mid 80s there for the lamette valley here's medford oregon at 95 boise 95 some 100 degree readings showing up for eastern washington look at the okanagan river valley that terrain feature 99 degrees right on the canada washington border you can see up the fraser river valley 85 so nice warm conditions conditions out there now if we go for tomorrow, we start to cool things down a little bit for Seafair. There's 80, 80 on Saturday, and 76 on Sunday for Seattle if you're heading out there. Still some warm conditions east of the mountains, but definitely cooling down as we go through this weekend and in towards early next week. You can see we suppress these temperatures on Monday. We're going to have the trough across the area and, again, trying to kick off some showers, mainly for the higher terrain. Now, if we look at Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we start to warm things up right at the end of the National Blend of Models here, and that's when the ridge as we start to build in still a ways out there you're talking 10 days off in the future so we'll take it with a grain of salt right now but we're starting to get some model agreement showing it and in the six to ten day the below normal signal this is going to be changed today almost certainly i don't even know why i'm really showing it honestly and this above normal signal is just a bunch of hogwash here and we're going to ignore that for now and my daughter is very excited about people who have donated to the uh techers robotics uh yeah they're getting very excited about that and i i listed some of them here i'll try to list some more and if you want to keep your name off that you can just put anonymous or whatnot you don't have to list, list your name but ac cool ronald detal and greg burgess yeah the kids are getting very excited about some of the donations coming in they don't have much money they're kind of a smaller operation there but you know they're they're out there trying to win awards here and trying to build their robot and trying to find a place they can call home for these uh so they can do their you know their practices and whatnot and also check out the patreon page the link is down below you can come in and ask questions and post pictures and whatnot also so anyway um yeah i'm gonna go check out the blue angels practice today and test them on my camera gear and whatnot um what else Watch for those thunderstorms today. Eyes on the sky across the Cascades. I'll be watching those showers to see how far they might try to drift off towards the Puget Sound lowlands. And what else? I guess we'll break this all down again tomorrow. We'll take a look at the extended forecast. And I will talk to you guys then.